Hi, I'm Chris Roberts. Ever since I saw Star Wars as a wide-eyed eight-year-old, I dreamt of being a hotshot pilot saving the galaxy or a lovable rogue making my way across the cosmos. It inspired me to make Wing Commander and has influenced everything I've done since then. Ten years ago, after 20 years of making games, I was burned out, so I took a break. But I never stopped playing games nor loving them. And now, I'm ready to come back, and I'd like to show you something I've been working on. But I don't want to build any old game. I want to build a universe. I want to build a game I always wanted to build, but I didn't have the tools to do until now. One that you can fly off a carrier fighting heroic war on the front lines, but also one that you can muster out and find your own fortune in the stars wherever your spaceship takes you. I want to be able to share this experience with my friends and fight against real opponents in space, not just AI. And I want this to be as good or better than any other game out there. And I want to actively push the boundaries of what you can do in a game. None of this would have been even possible two years ago. But with Moore's Law driving PC performance and cost and the gaming community embracing talented developers via crowdfunding, I believe it is possible today. I've never been accused of having a small vision. And so I thought it was best if I share my ambition with you visually. I'm pretty excited by how it's joined out. So why don't you come join me for a sneak peek? What I'm building, you know, the Star Citizen and the Squadron 42 combination, you essentially have both things available to you. So Squadron 42 is the sort of single player experience where you are getting missions. You're in the military, so, you know, it's not that open world because you're going to be going AWOL if you decide you want to go off to some other planet. So the idea of it is you, you, you serve a campaign, you fly missions, it's branching just like Wing Commander was, and you have exactly that Wing Commander experience with the added bonus of some multiplayer and your friends be able to sort of co-op play with you as wingmen when you fly your missions. But when you finish your tour of duty, you muster out and you're in the wide universe, and then it's open world. You can go where you want, do what you want, choose who you want to be. And the other thing that's nice about this is you don't have to do Squadron 42. You can get into the star unit. You can basically decide you're never going to go fight in the military. You can decide that I'm just going to be a merchant or I'm just going to be a pirate. I think what we're talking about here has everything that made Wing Commander great and has everything that made Privateer and Freelancer great. It's, it basically has both things and the single player sort of military campaign side sits inside this whole universe in a holistic fashion. The idea is that it should be dynamic. So I've talked about a sort of the universe being a living entity and something that's always changing and it's going to change based on the player's actions. So things that players do will have an effect on the universe and they'll also be able to become part of the universe. So a good example is say a player that's an explorer and they explore around enough time and they find a space anomaly and then they manage to navigate a jump. That jump point and the system that they've jumped into will get named after that player. So like that player becomes part of the history and lore of the universe. And on top of that, you know, we're going to be dynamically adding content to these universe. I'm not interested in having yearly updates. We'll have a team of people that are adding content on a weekly, uh, you know, every two weeks basis. So you're starting this system and you start in the game and it's got 50 star systems, for instance, and, you know, uh, two weeks in, the jump point's discovered for another system and someone navigates it and bam, we've got a 51st system and so on. So one thing I think you'll all be very excited about is the level of fidelity in space, the graphical detail and the immersion because it's to a level that I've never been able to achieve before. I'm trying to build a world and that it's so detailed and has such great texture that you forget that it's a game, which is always my goal when I'm building games. I'll just climb into the uh, cockpit of the fighter, and as you can see, as we're sort of kind of climbing in, there's a huge amount of detail in the cockpit, because one of the biggest keys for me in, in the next game I'm building is I really want to have that immersion to be complete, and we're going to do a lot of things that will really push that. Everything inside the cockpit operates and moves and works. If I look around the cockpit, you can see... Uh, the displays, my hands on the throttle, my hands on the joystick. The whole idea is we're immersed fully in a cockpit that's fully rendered in 3D. So if you issue a command, you hit a button, you'll actually see your character doing the cockpit. It's all for the immersion. Well, I think immersion is really important for me because I think that you have to really visualize and create a very believable world. I mean, so that's one of the reasons why I always sort of really push the visual fidelity is because I think that helps with the immersiveness. And the more immersive, the more connected you are to the experience, the more connected you are to the experience, I think the more fun the game itself will be. So uh, an example of that is if we're looking around at our character, we can see that you know, the character himself is you know, about 100,000 faces, which is about 10 times the detail of most uh, 
current day uh, AAA games are about 10,000 faces or so. And so that just allows you to have a little extra detail. The, the wires on his, uh, on his pilot outfit, the creases in the uniform, uh, and have it really stand up when you come in close and, and not uh, break down because it's too pixely. So I'm really excited about the physics, and they're going to be a strong part of the gameplay. So let me demonstrate uh, some of the features of how the physics interacts with how you control. The ship itself is built and designed and simulated like a real ship. So there's four thrusters on the bottom, and there's four thrusters on the top, and then of course there's obviously the engine at the back. Most of the ships in this universe are going to fly very much like an F-35 would do. They're fly-by-wire, so they take your input as a pilot, and crunch it into trajectories and vectors it needs to tell the various thrusters to achieve um, what you've asked it to do. So if I want to rotate or I want to say if I want to pitch like I'm doing now or I'm going to yaw or I'm going to roll, it actually pulls the thrusters themselves and says how quickly can you rotate to the position I need you to deliver thrust and how much thrust can you deliver and the thrusters talk back to the flight computer and says okay I can get you there in 0.1 of a millisecond and I give you this much thrust. The whole system is dynamically doing that every single frame and uh, flying that way. It's really cool because what happens is a lot of unexpected or dynamic behavior happens by it and then for instance if we're flying around and in a dogfight one of our thrusters gets damaged it will affect our maneuverability and it's not a matter of changing a script or data it's actually all dynamically simulated in the system. Here's a really great example of the level of scale. I'm going to walk out this corridor and out onto the flight deck. And as you can see, it's huge. Uh, the carrier uh, that's in the prototype level is about a kilometer in size. It's full of uh, activity and spaceships and people. So one of the things that I'm the most excited by the, uh, the, the technology we've been working on is the ability to scale. So we have detail for scale at a human level, so our, our character is about 1.8 meters in size. Uh, then the same level of detail for a fighter craft that you'll fly, or a bigger craft, which uh, you know, say this fighter craft is 27 meters in size. I'm building a game in a universe that's essentially the universe and the game I would like to play. So it's for gamers like myself. So I wouldn't say that I'm a social, casual gamer that plays Farmville. I mean, I like sophisticated experiences. Well, I'm picking PC over console because PC was what I always used to do in the past. But more importantly, it's because PC is an open platform. PC is always constantly innovating. I really care about the PC. I really want to push the PC to the limit. I think it's a great game platform. I'm really actually quite sad and angry about the situation right now where it sort of feels like you know PC games and PC gamers don't get any respect. It's the medium that is the coolest and the most powerful and, and that's really why I'm focused on PC. We're going to allow users to design some spaceships and build them and submit them and if it passes the standards then it can get sold in the ship dealers on certain planets and you know maybe the person that built that spaceship will be earning money from other players that think that spaceship's cool and want to pay them for it. So one of the things that I like about crowdfunding is cutting out the politics and, uh, and the, the noise of the, the big publisher and you're dealing directly with the people that, that want to experience the game that you're making. So one of my main goals whenever I make a game is to really immerse you in the world and universe. And I think you've seen that on what we've been even trying on the website today and this visual prototype is a demonstration of the direction that I want to take and will be taking. With today's technology, I can do that to a level that I never could have done uh, when I was making Wing Commander all those years ago or even Freelancer um, 10 years ago. And uh, it's actually really exciting. I feel like I can do something that has the fidelity of a film, but real time and I'm in it. And that is my dream. My name is Chris Roberts, and I would like to build a universe with you.